So people might be interested in learning a little bit about how the program started, because it's not intuitive why the National Institutes of Health, a research facility, would have a genetic counseling program. But even as early as 1994, when the program started, there was a real commitment to training outstanding um, clinicians in genome science because there was a commitment to translating what was happening in the Human Genome Project. So the program has been around a long time. Um, but the NIH couldn't do it alone because there was no degree awarding aspect of the institution, so we needed a partner. And it turned out that Johns Hopkins School of Public Health up the road from Bethesda, Maryland, offered an outstanding partnership, um, offering courses and a degree that we couldn't offer on the NIH campus. Mm -hmm. So that's really how we ended up with the system that we have today, with expertise in both institutions, with the NIH really providing the genetics expertise, teaching the medical genetics classes, the genetic counseling classes, and the developmental biology course, and Hopkins offering the degree and teaching the research methods course and the public health courses. And then we have faculty experts in both institutions that can provide thesis mentoring to the students. Yeah, and I think when I think about um, the years that have gone by and how many people like you and I who've been around practically since the inception of the program, um, it really bodes well that our faculty are really committed to this program and making sure we produce outstanding genetic counselors. And it really has felt to me very much like this is why we're a successful program, because one institution can't do it without the other. We're mm -hmm. able, we're really a very nice synergy. Right. Mm -hmm.